Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for attending this virtual hybrid meeting of the Planning Committee on Thursday, the 15th of October, 2020. I'd like to wish my older brother a very happy 60th birthday, if I may. And that goes from all the Labour group. I'm sure your candle is, your, your cake is collapsing under the weight of candles. Just before I start, I'd like to welcome Councillor Gareth Watson and Councillor Harry Hancock to the Planning Committee. Obviously, I would expect you to abstain when it comes to the minutes of the last two meetings, okay? For those of you who don't know me, why not? I am Councillor Caleb Tomlinson and I am the Chair of this Committee. Councillor Mal Donoghue is the Vice Chair and also present with me are officers and some members of the committee. Uh, this is an audio and video meeting. It is being recorded and the stream will be live on YouTube. The web address for this is displayed on the agenda for the meeting and can be found on the council's website. If you've joined the meeting because you're a member of the public who has registered to speak, please note you have a time limit of up to four minutes. Please unmute your microphone when I invite you to speak. The senior solicitor will operate a stopwatch and will confirm when your time runs out. You should then finish, or if in the middle of making a point, wind up within a few seconds and finish speaking. After each report has been presented and any speakers have made their representations, I will bring the application into committee. If any committee members wish to speak on an application, you should unmute your microphone or use the chat function in the top right hand corner to notify our moderator that you wish to speak. I will then invite you in, in order. Our senior solicitor Tasneem will repeat the motion before the vote is taken to ensure everyone is aware of what is being voted on. And I will call each member alphabetically to vote and Tasneem will confirm the outcome of the decision. If the technology fails, then I will adjourn the meeting for several minutes to try and resolve the issue, or if this is not possible, a new date and time will be organised. Please, can I ask all members to confirm that they can see, hear and speak before the meeting begins? I will call your names alphabetically. So, Councillor Will Adams. Yes, Chair. Councillor James Flannery. Yes, Chair. Councillor Mary Green. Yes, Chair. Councillor Harry Hancock. Yes, Chair. Councillor John Hesketh. Present, Mr Chair. Councillor Christine Melia. Yes, Chair. Councillor Phil Smith. Yes, Chair. Councillor Gareth Watson. Yes, Chair. And Councillor Barry Yates. Yes, Chair. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Nold. Yes, Chair. Stephen Brown. Yes, Chair. Tasneem Safdar. Yes, Chair. Catherine Lewis. Yes, Chair. Chris Sowerby. Yes, Chair. Debbie Roberts. Yes, Chair. Janice Crook. Yes, Chair. And Charlotte Lynch. Yes, Chair. Okay. Do we have apologies for absence? Yes, Chair. We've received two apologies. Uh, Councillor Caroline Moon and Councillor Donaghy. Okay. Thanks for that, Tasneem. Um, as this is a hybrid meeting, if a member dialing in remotely has a pecuniary interest, they are requested to leave the meeting completely rather than just mute their microphone. The member will be called in to rejoin the meeting following the completion of the item in question. Okay, does anyone have any interest to declare? No, okay. Um, item agenda four, minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of September 2020. I have the minutes of the meeting of 17th September in front of me. Do I have a seconder? Thank Move you, Council here. Flannery, Council Smith, thank you. Okay, can we vote on that? Councillor Will Adams? Vote. Councillor James Flannery? Approved. Councillor Mary Green? Four. Councillor Harry Hank. Oh, Councillor John Hesketh? Four. 
Councillor McKiggett? No. Councillor Christine Melia? Four. Councillor Phil Smith? Four. Councillor, Gar Councillor Barry Yates? Four. Okay. Agenda item five, minutes of the meeting held on the 21st of September 2020. I have the minutes of the meeting of the 17th of September in front of me. Do I have a seconder? I'll second those, Chair. Councillor Smith, thank you very much. We'll go to the vote on that one. Councillor Will Adams? Four. James Flannery? Four. Councillor Mary Green? Um, I wasn't at that meeting, so I abstain. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor John Hesketh? Four. Councillor, Mi Councillor Christine Melia? Four. Councillor Phil Smith? Four. Councillor Barry Yates? Four. Okay, thanks very much for that. Okay, item number six on the agenda, uh, appeal decisions. Uh, Jonathan, please. Thank you, Chair. Just one appeal to report um, this time. Uh, this relates to a property at 25 uh, Midge Hall Lane. Uh, the application was a new permission in principle approach, which is only coming in, in the last, last couple of years. Uh, and this related to the erection of one dwelling uh, in, within the curtilage of, of another dwelling in, in, in that location. Um, members who were on committee at the time may recall that the, the application for the development was, was refused because um, it was felt that it was against Greenbelt policy uh, in that location. We've recently re re received the planning inspector's decision um, on, on this. Um, the inspector considered looking at the area that the, um, <coughs> the gap where, where the new dwelling would be built um, constituted infill. Um, interestingly, that they looked at the surrounding development and considered that the the neighbouring car parking for the commercial use next door constituted a, a frontage uh, and therefore he he felt that this this development constituted infill in the green belt uh, and, and on that basis the, the appeal was was allowed um th this is quite interesting because it's it's um the second very similar kind of decision we've had on on infill in the green belt so it's clearly something we we need to be looking at moving forward chair thank you Okay, thanks for that, Jonathan. Okay, agenda item number seven, land off Croston Road, Moss Lane and Flensburg Way, Farrington Moss. Um, Debbie, if you'd like to present the report, please. Thank you, Chair. Let's get the report up. Okay, the site is a roughly 19 hectare tract of land comprising three parcels to the north of Bannister Lane in Farrington. Um, it's part of the wider site W housing allocation with the southern part already being delivered by Kia and Miller Homes. The report refers to two applications and it seeks reserve matters for the larger central site, which already has outline permission, and full permission for two smaller parcels A and B. Following discussions with officers, it was agreed to, that to ensure a more cohesive development, the three parcels will be delivered as one, but we do need to make two decisions. To the east is Croston Row, that's a mixed type and height residential. To the north is Moss Lane, which has older, recently constructed and under development dwellings. To the south are the rear of properties on Bannister Lane, with the Keir and Miller sites beyond. Um, this photograph doesn't show them, but they, they are there now. And to the west is the Flensburg Way bypass. In terms of development, the sites are considered to be in a sustainable location. There are no tree protection uh, preservation orders and it's flood zone ones so are least susceptible to flooding. The development also doesn't constitute environmental impact assessment development. Um, the site W is supported by the adopted master plan and the design code which guide this proposal. So in terms of the proposal itself, we've got parcel A which is in the northeast corner and parcel B which are in the southwest corner. Together they seek full permission for 121 dwellings. The main site has outline permission from 2014 for up to 400 and the reserve matters tonight comes in for 399 dwellings. In total across the three parcels, that will be 520 properties. And as mentioned, the site will be delivered as one with a phased approach encompassing all three parcels. 
The proposal has been assessed against and is compliant with the adopted master plan and the design call for site W. It's currently, the sites are well screened by mature landscaping, the majority of which would remain, but where it's removed, it will be replaced and we've had detailed landscaping plans for that. There's an area of public open space provided for to the north of the site, which would extend along the central link road. There'd also be in-site landscape into private gardens and, and throughout the site. Um, significant planting scheme as detailed in full in your report, which more than compensates. And the council's ecologist and arborist are happy there'll be improvement in biodiversity and tree planting to compensate for any loss. The site will be built out over an estimated 10 years, phased in a clockwise, anti-clockwise direction from the northwest corner. Construction traffic will come in from Flensburg Way and follow the build progress and temporary compounds and sales and welfare areas built as and when. Um, the proposal is a mix of semi-detached, detached and terrace properties in bungalow, two-storey and two-storey with roof accommodation. Higher properties tending to be towards the site centre, but the bungalows will be along Croston Road where the greater presence of existing bungalows to protect a residential amenity. Okay, the adopted master plan and the outline permission require primary access into the site from Flensburg Way. Um, and you, as you've probably seen, there is a new spur off the Flensburg Way roundabout, the tank roundabout that's already been constructed. Secondary access from Croston Road. And we've had a late objection to this, a uh, very late, it came in yesterday by Farrington Parish Council, um, objecting to this Croston Road access, but both are prerequisites of the outline permission and the master plan. The Croston Road will be a priority T junction. The link road from Flensburg Way will go through the site centre connecting Moss Lane and Bannister Lane. This is just a section at the top of the site that you can see. It would be six metres wide with a two metre footway on the western side and a three metre combined foot and cycle path on the eastern side. Secondary roads run in an east to west uh, direction in, in a really legible hierarchy. It's quite a grid formation. Traffic assessment shows that the majority of the junctions in the area will operate at capacity, but the capacity at the twin roundabouts will be exceeded. Now, they're the ones at Fiddler Lane, Croston Road, Flensburg Way and Farrington Road. But there are planned improvements as part of the city deal to accommodate all the development from all allocated local plan sites. And that will take that, this section into account as well. Um, the applicant has undertaken extensive pre-application discussions prior to submission with the Highways Authority and LCC are happy with all aspects, including access, internal site layout and parking provision. Environmental health are also satisfied that the air quality report, which states that air quality is not a constraint to development. There would be 15 complementary house types and there's some of the examples on screen. We've got the materials palette provided and the house types reflect those on the wider site W, the uh, Keir and Miller sites in the south, whilst respecting the mixed design of the existing units on, on adjacent roads. A lot of time's gone into making sure that these properties are compliant and protect the amenity of existing and future ref, uh, residents and it is fully compliant with the council's separation standards. An appropriate, the scheme includes an appropriate boundary treatment, some domestic fencing, others acoustic fencing where properties are closer to Flensburg Way and noise levels are going to be higher, but environmental health are satisfied and in noise terms have no objection and officers can confirm that schemes compliant with the various design policies and the adopted design code. Turning to affordable housing, um, there is a 30% affordable housing requirement. The outline provides for 15% on the main site and 15% as an off-site contribution. Uh, now that's already been paid and we've got 2.1 million pounds or thereabouts from the applicant. The full sections, which are parcels A and B, the 121 properties, need to secure 30%. As agreed with the rest of the site, we're going to, the applicant proposes to deliver the affordable housing across the site, across the three parcels, and in total there will be 18%, that's 96 units, 
in addition to the 15% financial contribution that's already been paid. Now, the offer exceeds the policy requirement, but the mix offered by the applicant and the registered provider isn't quite what the strategic housing team would like. But we've got to take into account that there is £2.1 million, which has already been paid, and it's available for the council to spend on affordable housing offsite in any way it sees fit. As such, the council can decide what type and tenure of properties it wishes to use the money on, and in doing so, this elevates the applicant's offer in line with the strategic housing officer's request. Um, affordable housing is tenure blind, and as you can see on the screen, the ones with the uh, red edges are affordable. There are quite a number on the western side, and as the phasing is anti-clockwise, the majority of the affordable housing would be delivered early on, uh, which gives us social benefit. Okay, just a couple of photographs, cobbled together a little bit, but. There's a view from Bannister Lane. It's well screened at the Bannister Lane end from Flensburg Way. You can see the Flensburg Way roundabout and the properties to the north. There's a view from the new spur at Flensburg Way. The roundabout would be behind me. Um, again, new properties on the left. This is Moss Lane and this is the site. Croston Road would be on the left. And this will be the, pros the proposed Croston Road access between 310 and 326 Croston Road. Forgive me if I get that, got that wrong, I've not written it down, but um, the new access will be from here. This is a secondary access. And this is a recently added spur to the Flensburg Way roundabout, the primary access. Um, ground surveys assessed by environmental health and they are satisfied, but many members will have received an email from a resident about anthrax presence on the site. Um, concerns appear to come from anecdotal evidence, but to put minds at rest, in addition to the formal assessment by environmental health, Public Health England have been contacted and they confirm that there are no reports or records of anthrax in the area. In addition, the applicant also supplied a briefing note from their own ground specialist, which states that there is no recorded human cases in the UK. There are only two recorded cases between 1997 and 2014 from soil contamination or development of land used by livestock, non-human cases. There is no risk to health, human health from the development of the site. But in the briefing note, they have put together a detailed risk assessment and a removal method should animal carcasses be found. That will minimise human contact during and after construction and that, excuse me, that briefing note is in the plan list condition, so it will be uh, something the developer needs to take note of. Um, there were improvement works to the Tiger Junction were secured as part of the associated outline consent. Uh, works have since been superseded with highway improvement works to the same junction as part of the test track application. Both sets of developers will therefore provide funding to Lancashire County Council to deliver improvement works as granted under that test track permission. So street scene visualisation, um, they're all from Flensburg Way. So if you run from top to bottom, um, there would be a linear, it will be a linear visualisation. We've had 11 letters of representation, which are detailed in the report and no statutory objections subject to conditions. The scheme all, overall is considered policy compliant. There are two sets of conditions on the report. They're slightly different uh, for each application to avoid duplication and disparity with the, the outline permission. Um, and the update sheet before you provides for the differences and, and for a couple of minor changes. As I mentioned earlier, we've had a very late objection from Farrington Parish Council who were led to believe that the access will be from Flensburg Way only. That was never the case and Croston Road access is on both the adopted master plan and the approved outline permission, both which went through this committee. It is recommended therefore that the, the application is approved with conditions and the decision deferred to the chairman, the vice chairman and director of planning on completion of a legal agreement to secure public open space and affordable housing. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that report, um, Debbie. If I can just um, 
let new members know this has already been approved. We're just looking at reserve matters this evening. I've had no people registering to speak. I have got Councillor Karen Alton wishing to speak on this matter, so... Good evening, evening Councillor Walton. If we can keep evening, it to four sir. minutes, thank you. Yes, I will, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, as well. I'm Councillor Karen Walton, um, Ward Councillor for Farrington West and a Farrington Parish Councillor concerning the pal planning application for these 520 homes. My concerns tonight are with the access from the site between numbers 310 and 326 Crossroom Road. Permission was agreed on the master plan for this area in 2014, with the primary access being from the roundabout on Flensburg Way and the secondary access onto Croston Road. The primary access will be used for all development traffic and for all completed dwellings until the last phase of development, when the secondary access would be completed. My concerns tonight are with the site of 520 dwellings would all be able to use the secondary access onto Croston Road. The potential increase in traffic onto Croston Road from all the site would have a huge impact on existing residents in the area and would cause more traffic congestion east to Loster Call and Tardigate and west of the Tiger traffic lights at Earnshaw Bridge, even with all the improvements intended. Uh, and the roads are already at a standstill at peak times during the day. The congestion and delays already experienced by daily users of these roads and the impact of hundreds of new dwellings would having access to them would have a considerable detrimental impact on the existing residents and the capabilities of all these local roads. The new residents would most probably use the local roads to access schools, shops and health services in Lost Call, Leyland and Penwitham, which are already struggling with capacity and also access Junction 29 of the M6. Although the site is not subject to an air quality management area, the impact of the increased volume of traffic using Tidy Gate lost a call, which is subject to an air quality management order, and the Tiger Junction would have a considerable detrimental impact on the health of all residents in, on Croston Road and the surrounding areas. I'm asking the Planning Committee tonight to reconsider the secondary access onto Croston Road for all the dwellings on the site, and considered perhaps only the dwellings from the last phase of development should be uh, allowed to, take, to use the secondary access. Thank you for listening tonight. Yeah, thanks for that, Karen. Uh, Councillor Walton. Uh, Debbie, do you, do you, have you got anything to... No? No comments to make on that? Other than to, to reiterate that this application has got permission, um, traffic impacts and air quality assessments have been made and assessed as acceptable by the relevant bodies. That's it, though. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Debbie. Uh, Chris? Thank you, Chair. Um, on the point of the second access, there was a previous application by Hollywood Homes um, that was for a cul-de-sac access in that single parcel. Uh, that was refused because it didn't align with the master plan. Um, and that went to a hearing, and I think that hearing was probably, bad. I'd say six years ago, it could have been seven or eight years ago, uh, to be honest. Um, but that so, and. County Highways came to that appeal and um, they argued the case that that um, application, which had a cul-de-sac and didn't have the connection through to the main spine road, didn't align with the master plan and therefore should be refused because it didn't provide for the comprehensive development of the site. And the planning inspector, um, who won that appeal, the planning inspector agreed that there needed to be that second access point. So thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, Chris. OK, I am now going to open this up to committee. No, I'm not, sorry. <laughs> uh, I've got the agents um, wishing to address us. First, we have Anna Relf. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thought you'd forgotten me then. <laughs> I certainly haven't. <laughs> Uh, good okay, evening. If you'd like to present, four minutes, please. Yes, thank you. Good evening, members, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Anna Ralph, and I am the agent and planning consultant for these applications. I am joined tonight by Andy Denton from Keepmoat Homes. Andy will speak shortly to confirm Keepmoat's commitment to delivering housing on the site at the earliest opportunity, 
as part of their partnership with Homes England. As members will be aware, the site represents one of the three major sites for development in the borough that are identified in the local plan. It's been allocated for housing for a number of years and a master plan for the site was approved by members of this committee in 2013. As a result, the principle of housing on the site has already been established. The majority of the site benefits from outline permission for 400 dwellings. Despite this favourable planning context, development on the site is yet to commence and to date, no houses have been completed. Homes England has identified Keepmo as their delivery partner for the site and the parties are working together to enable new homes to be delivered at the earliest opportunity. The applications before you tonight demonstrate how the site can be developed and seeks your approval to the detailed design and layout being proposed by Keepmo. Officers have confirmed that the proposals align with the approved master plan for the allocation as well as the design code and parameters that were approved at outline stage. The matters that have already been approved include the two site accesses from Flensburg Way via the tank roundabout and directly from Croston Road, as well as the provision of a north to south link road and pedestrian and cycle connections. A mix of dwelling types have been chosen to reflect and complement the character of the local area. This includes the provision of a number of bungalows adjacent to existing bungalows on Croston Road, as well as the inclusion of on-site affordable homes. The scheme has been designed to retain the existing landscape, landscape features wherever possible, and the proposed landscaping includes for the creation of significant areas of open space and new tree and hedgerow planting. We have worked proactively with officers throughout the design and planning process and have addressed comments made by consultees, such that all matters have now been agreed. Your officer's report confirms that the proposals comply with all relevant strategic and detailed planning policies and will secure the delivery of a site which has been identified for housing for a number of years. I would now like to hand over to Andy, who will provide an overview of Keepmote's partnership with Homes England and reiterate their commitment to delivery. OK, thanks for that. Um, Andy Denton, would you like to come in? Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is Andy Denton and I am Head of Land and Partnerships at Keepmo Homes. Keepmo is delighted to present our proposals this evening, which have been worked up over the past 12 months in a positive collaboration with Homes England, your council officers and other statutory consultees for whom we thank for their active participation. Despite the current economic uncertainties, Keepmo remains 100% committed to and excited for the delivery of this development, which is recommended by your office, officers for approval tonight. Keepmo are looking to commence development during the first quarter of 2021 and remain committed to the project delivery timeline, which has been agreed with the landowners, Homes England, to ensure not only a, a timely start on site, but also to continued annual delivery as one of a number of projects regionally which will form part of the government's drive to accelerate housing delivery. These outputs will, will make a significant, significant and vital contribution to housing supply in the borough, as well as supporting local jobs and businesses during a period of economic uncertainty. Our delivery team at Keepmote includes a dedicated social and economic impact manager who will be engaging with local communities and stakeholders to promote such opportunities throughout the scheme's duration. This will be coupled with the payment of approximately £3.3 million of community infrastructure levy to further enhance borough-wide initiatives identified by the Council. We are partnering with Onward Homes, a registered provider who already, who already operate in the borough, to deliver 96, two, three and four bedroomed affordable family homes as part of the overall development. This on-site provision of affordable homes is in addition to and accompanies the £2 million financial contribution, which has previously been approved and paid to the Council as part of the existing plan of permission to enhance the delivery of much needed affordable housing within the borough in advance of the development commencing and which complies with adopted local policy. The affordable provision has purposely been front loaded such that the majority, some 78 units, will be provided in the first few phases of the development and will be delivered 
by our partner, with our partner, Onward Homes. This is a significant benefit of our, of, the, of our scheme and is one which different, differentiates Keepmo from others due to its unique partnering delivery approach with registered providers. I hope it has been helpful to confirm Keepmo's commitment to the delivery of, of much needed housing on this site and hope you feel able to support your officer's recommendation and approve the applications tonight. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks very much for that. Um, I will now open up to committee. I have Councillor James Flannery wanting to speak. Thanks, Chair. Um, thanks for everyone who's made a contribution. Um, just a couple of observations, please. Um, first of all, it's obviously it's consistent with your master plan. It's good to see that the 30% target for affordable is, is attempted to be achieved with the contribution of some financial assistance. But this is a very comprehensive report, so well done to the officers. I'd just like to look at the partners here, on with Homes, Keep Moat and Homes England. So in terms of our desire in South Ribble, <clears throat> we've said it before, and we've had other people in. It's about the people in South Ribble. Uh, development has got to be um, has got to be brought to the table in a, an acceptable format, which this looks like it is. So well done so far. But when on page 24, 7.3, economic development, it says something about a skills assessment may be provided. Well, can I just suggest with the partners and the reputation which you've Andy just expressed, that we have a robust employment and skills plan in place, please, before we start this project, because <clears throat> we've had it in the past where people have been brought into the borough to do this work. It's such a big development. It's part of the, 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 the master plan in terms of the housing, um, the housing for the borough. But it's important that the financial contribution and the affordable homes is great, but we also need the, the benefit for the people in the borough. So that employment and skills plan, uh, can I please request that the officers make sure that's on the table, approved and comprehensive before we start. But other than that, a good submission. So well done. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Flannery. I'll just bring Debbie Roberts back in. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can just confirm we have got an employment skills assessment, but our economic development team didn't have time to assess it. Um, it's been in with us for a week or two, but there were delays at their end, which is no fault of the applicant. And to avoid another month's delay, they've agreed to this condition. But we have got one and it's in. It's being assessed as we as we speak. Thanks, Chair. Are you happy with that, Councillor Flannery? Thanks very much, yeah. Thank you. Councillor Mary Green. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of points, really, for the officer, just a couple of queries, really. When the actual um, spine road that's running through this development is built, could you tell me what is going to happen with Moss Lane? I'm just conscious that if traffic's coming off Flensburg Way onto the spine road, um, obviously the people living on that part of the development will use that to get into the part where they live. But what is happening then to Moss Lane? Because it could potentially become a rat run through to Croston Road. Is there anything at all being planned to sort of mediate this? That's one thing. Secondly, on Flensburg Way, um, along the stretch of the bypass, as you already see with the existing developments that's down there, a bit lower down, um, there's high fences which I presume are these acoustic fences, which are referred to in this report. They're running along the bypass, which are an absolute eyesore. And we need more greenery planting there to soften the visual view a bit. And also it would help with the noise and potential pollution. Um, therefore, on reading this report that the, the developers are planning to do a continuation of a similar type of acoustic fence on the properties nearest to Flensburg Way. Could we put that as part of the conditions that there's um, bushes and trees and landscaping left there that could soften these fences slightly rather than have a stark wooden fence all the length of Flensburg Way, which I think would look awful when you've got the rural aspects on the other side of the bypass. Thirdly, the bungalow homes are stated as, as some of them have got um, loft access. To me, that's stating it's at two and a half 
or to be more clear, three-storey houses, which basically there's none in that area of Croston Road or anywhere around there. Uh, they're all bungalows or ordinary sort of semi-detached or detached two-floor houses. So whether those could be looked at to be adapted to fit in better, um, I don't know. And the last point is a point about the affordable housing. I notice in the report that they're being clustered in four clusters of 32, 18, 20 something. There's four clusters of affordable housing together instead of sort of pepper potting them across the site. Obviously, if they're semi detached, they'd have to be pepper popped in semi detached. But do you not think that would be better for the developer to do it that way? Because then you're not creating an area where they're all affordable of a certain style or whatever or size. If the pepper potted, they would blend more into the whole estate development, as you might say, and uh, not be quite as apparent to be different from the other houses which are privately owned. That was it. Thank you. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Green. I always thought if you put loft access in a bungalow, it became a two storey building, not a three storey. But maybe they've got attics. Um, Debbie, would you like to come back on that? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, starting at the beginning, Moss Lane, there are no plans that I am aware of to block off Moss Lane. I mean, it is a public highway and access is, is possible through there. Um, the acoustic fence, where there is landscaping already in place along Flensburg Way, that will remain and fences will go adjacent to it. In the section from Flensburg Way to about halfway, there is no landscaping as we as at the moment, um, so acoustic fences will go in and you mentioned that there was a, there may be an issue of noise. These are being put in as acoustic fences purposely to prevent that noise and environmental health are absolutely um, happy with that, absolutely satisfied with that. I think there's been some confusion when I described the houses and maybe that's my fault. The bungalows will be on Croston Road. Now, the bungalows won't have loft access. They will be single storey properties. Throughout the rest of the site, there will be two storey houses and two storey houses with loft accommodation. They're not a full three storey in the main. They are two storey with, um, as I say, loft accommodation instead. Um, Affordable housing clustering, yes, I agree, they, they should be pepper potted, but because of the large number um, for registered providers, there is a maintenance and management issue if all of these properties are in different locations. Our strategic housing officer is happy that we were going to cluster these. And as I mentioned in my report, in my speech earlier, they are tenure blind, so they won't all be the same property and, and obvious from the rest of the site. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Debbie. Chris Sowerby. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of points of clarity. Um, there's a condition on the associated outline that requires the severance of Moss Lane. Um, so there'd be no potential rat run there. You would not be able to get from Moss Lane um, to the um, tank roundabout as you previously uh, could. And on the point of two-storey properties, um, there, when we briefed, uh, previously bought the uh, Kia application at a planning committee, which was about a year and a half ago, um, there was an assessment done and um, just shy of 30% of the properties on the Miller site to the south um, are two and a half storey properties and a similar amount was approved um, on the Kia development. So um, there is some within the Miller and there's some coming forward within the uh, Kia development that's currently under construction. So thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. Um, Councillor Mary Green, were you happy with that? Well, not really happy on all the responses, but thank you for, for the um, comprehensive reply from the officers. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Green. Uh, Councillor Phil Smith. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, my main concern is is the highway network, um, both Flensburg Way from Leyland to the Tank Roundabout, um, which, if I remember rightly, is supposed to be dueled at some stage. Um, 
I don't know whether it shows that on the plan. I didn't quite pick it up. It wasn't really detailed enough. Um, and then obviously the 582 itself. Um, um, as a council, we, we, we know um, the discussions that, that have been had at uh, City Deal uh, with regard to the 582 duelling. Um, you know, we've been very, uh, uh, I suppose, forthright uh, in, in what we, uh, we've been asking for there, uh, that... Um, uh, that it's infrastructure before um, development. Um, whilst there has been some uh, development of the <coughs> infrastructure on the 582, I don't think it in any way deals with um, the traffic issues that, that, that we have there. Um, all it actually does, and it's been a vast improvement, but all it does is move the traffic jam a bit further down the road. Um, I would like to see something in here that would guarantee parts of uh, the 582 uh, completing at least from the tank roundabout down to where it, it's at the Penwortham area where, where, the, <clears throat> where the, um, the 582 has been dueled up. Um, otherwise, we're going to have more traffic all the time and it's, it is a real problem now. It would be certainly a problem with another 500 houses on there. Um, so what I'm asking really is uh, there's any way with regard to conditions that, that could be um, put onto this application uh, with regard to a number of houses built uh, and the timing of the, the build of the 582. Um, could it be, for instance, uh, that a, a portion of that road needs to be completed when 200 houses have been built? Um, that, that's, that's my thoughts at, at this moment in time. Um, I think the, um, the development, uh, we know it's been on the way for, for many, many years um, um, and is now coming forward. And I, and I know that the money from the uh, development itself will go into City Deal. The sale money will go into City Deal and eventually we will build up a fund. But um, uh, what we've always said is that we would like it the other way around. We would like the infrastructure first and then the development following it. So maybe officers could just um, advise on, on that particular issue. Debbie, if you'd like to come in or Jonathan. That, that, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got some, some sympathies for what, what Councillor um, Smith is say, saying here. Um, for four years ago, when the outline was, was originally looked at, County Highways did, did look at it at that time. They looked at all the traffic flows um, in the area and, and they were satisfied at that, that time that the highway network could cope, cope with the proposal um, coming, coming forward. So that, that was the view at, at that point in time. So the principle is, is already estab established. Um, if you like, I think what Councillor Smith is, is asking for is, is the prospects of pushing on what's, what's termed a grampian condition where you'd limit the amount of um, development now because of the outline um, application that's already been granted um, on the site and that the county highways have already already looked at the highway situation. We're not able to, to put one of those on in, in, in this instance but while sympathising with, with, with the view. Um, it, it's probably worth highlighting, I think, since since the outline consent's been granted, there has been improvements. There's been the roundabout itself has, has obviously been been massively changed um, to accommodate development, and then you've got the junctions all the way along the 582 um, as well. So, but it is missing that dueling bit bit at the moment. Um, as, as Debbie said, that you're probably looking at a 10 year build out for this for this scheme. So that the rate of development is what 30 to 40 dwellings per annum. So it will drip feed and obviously the, the delivery of the A582 and the dueling will, will come along alongside that. Um, obviously the County Council do currently have a planning application with them for the dueling of the 582 as, as well. So the situation is quite, quite different to, to how it was e even when we granted the out outline, um, if, if that assists, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Jonathan. Debbie, did you want to come? So, can I just clarify, Chris, Moss Lane is going to become a cul-de-sac as such? Yes, the, uh, there was a condition um, on the outline plan of permission that required details for the severance of Moss Lane. So, you will not be able to travel down Moss Lane and um, get onto the town. Right, All right, thanks for that, Councillor Phil Smith. And then I have Councillor Barry Yates. 
Yeah, they, thank you, Chair. Uh, I mean, I obviously have to accept what Jonathan says with with regard to that. Um, I, I'm not happy about it, I have to say, because um, the delivery of the 582 is uh, is not only my ambition, it's an ambition of everybody in this council. Um, and to say that the county um, don't see it as a problem, um, that sounds absolutely weird, really, when you when you think about it, because a lot of it's already been duelled anyway, and if there was no need for it, they wouldn't have done it in the first place. And there is a desperate need to complete that 582 and that duelling of that road uh, for everybody's benefit. Um, so, whilst well, I accept what Jonathan's saying, I don't understand and I don't accept the rationale behind it. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Barry Yates. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have concerns about the highway side bit as well, especially the uh, secondary exit. And like Councillor Smith said, uh, the 582. But um, unfortunately, um, things have moved on since this was uh, outlined and we can't belt, it, belt and braces it now. It actually have been done at a different time. And highways are looking at it, it's in the, in the programme. So in saying that, um, I'd like to second the application. Councillor Yates, was that a proposal for approval? Uh, I seconded the, the approval. It was proposed right at the beginning, was it not? No, Councillor Yates, nobody's proposed. But if you right, if you I'll, wish to, if you I'll wish propose, to propose I'll propose um, approval. Okay, thanks for that, Councillor Yates. So I have a proposal for approval by Councillor Barry Yates. Councillor Mary Green, you want to come in? You you need to unmute yourself, Councillor Green. I think I, I think I'd just starve, it wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, um, yeah, you have now. I'm on now, yeah. No, it was just to concur with uh, Councillor Smith, actually, but also um, the B5253 south from the tank towards Leyland, that should also be dueled. I don't know if that's included in the in the plans. I'll bring Jonathan Nord back in with that one. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. Um, the, the plans that are with the County Council at the moment sh show dueling from the tank roundabout southwards to the Long Mini Gate roundabout um so along along that stretch as, as well as the 582 yes thanks for that jonathan okay so i have a, a proposal for approval uh councillor hesketh you want to come in uh, yes just a short word or two mr chairman this site has been on the cards for a good number of years uh, and it is a designated site within the South River uh, local plan. But I, as uh, a number of the councils are, uh, they have a, a little bit of worry as to connection with the uh, 582. Uh, I don't like to keep repeating it, but uh, we do have reservations about that. But uh, at the end of the day, it does look like a, a nice site and well designed and I can go along with the, the recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Hesketh. OK, so we have a proposal for approval, a seconder. Do we have any other proposals? No. OK, we'll go to the vote then. Councillor Will Adams. Four, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Flannery? Four. Councillor Mrs Mary Green? Four. Four. Councillor Harry Hancock? Approved. Councillor John Hesketh? Four. Four. Councillor Christine Melia? Four. <coughs> Councillor Phil Smith? Four. Councillor Gareth Watson? Four. And Councillor Barry Yates. Four. And I am also for approval. Um, Taz, can you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? So that's a unanimous um, vote there for approval um, as outlined in the officer recommendation. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Taz. Okay. Um, 
Agenda item number eight, land at Cottage Gardens, Bamber Bridge. Um, over to you again, Bobby, please, to uh, present the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, this site is half a hectare, accessed off Cottage Gardens, and it's the end of a small development by the same applicant. There's mature planting on three sides, but this is an older photograph and the site centre has been cleared. It's part of the wider tract allocated as site S by local plan policy D1, which is allocation of housing land, and it allocates the entire site for residential development. To the north, east and west are open areas which are also in the same housing allocation and to the south is cottage gardens, typical cul-de-sac arrangement. The proposal will be accessed from and extends this cul-de-sac. Just a better view really, um, cottage gardens built around 1999 and the wooded continuation of that, all land visible is allocated housing land and a view of the site through Cottage Gardens. This is access from Brindle Road. Uh, sight lines and access are considered acceptable to Lancashire County Council Highways team. Proposal itself is for 11 detached uh, houses and associated works. We've got two storey detached units in a modern style, six complementary house types. Eight four bedders, three bedroom, three three bedrooms with spatial separation and off-road parking to adopted standards. Design and amenity space reflect that of cottage garden development, and access would extend the existing cul-de-sac. Supplementary landscaping throughout and around the site, and some hedge, some trees and hedgerows are to be removed, although the mature oaks will remain. Trees on site that are to be replaced, as agreed with the. Council's Arborist. In addition, a beach hedge, post and rail fence and temporary stock proof fencing would, uh, would surround the site. Members might remember that this item was deferred uh, probably two months ago to provide more information. There were four issue, issues, so taking each one in turn. We've got highways. Um, Lancashire County Council noted in June of this year that parking and proposed highway layout were acceptable. They asked for two minor amendments. Those changes were made before the last committee and county confirmed that everything was acceptable and their comments and amended plans were on public access at the time of committee. Um, Lancashire County Council was, comments were sought again after deferral and they confirmed that the plan was still acceptable, that the minor amendments had been made and agreed to and that any concern relating to highways was reaffirmed as satisfactory to County Council. Second issue was um, the loss of trees. Uh, the Council's Arborist objected initially to loss of trees but the applicant provided a landscaping scheme excuse me, a revised landscaping. It was brought to committee and it was considered acceptable. Again, this had been fully advertised and was available on public access at the time. Following deferral, the arborist reconfirmed that he was satisfied with the planting and said the judgment he had made was based on the future of the amenity of the trees. He also agreed with the officers that in tree terms, the proposal was policy compliant. The third issue was section 106 monies. Um, just over £20,000 will be payable towards public open space and secured by a section 106 legal agreement. That was for play areas at Bracken Close, natural amenity space at Furtherfield and playing pitches at Worden Park as requested by the council's leisure contracts and projects manager in July. Um, at the July committee, members sought to use the public open space monies towards a, a number of different schemes rather than the ones evidenced by the open space strategy. In line with the SIL regulations, it isn't in the council's gift to reallocate funding where need isn't evidenced specifically for that area, other than playing pitches which are borough wide. Uh, we also had a specific member request for funding of pitches in Lost at Hall, but the leisure manager confirmed in August of this year that She's double checked and the parts team agree that due to the amount of money, it would not be enough to complete any works required on the pitches in Lostock Hall. She again asked for monies to go to Worden Park. Just one thing to note, Mr. Wheel and the legal services manager explained to committee last time that the applicant has not refused to pay the sum, 
and that refusal on the grounds that money should be spent elsewhere wouldn't stand up for scrutiny if the applicant appealed the decision. The final point was drainage on site. Um, there were concerns that drainage information hadn't been su supplied, but despite officers confirming that it's standard practice to secure drainage by condition, members requested more information. So currently the surface water sewer runs through the site centre with its eventual outfall into Fowler Brook. That's the blue line. The Fowl sewer that was constructed in, in around 2003 to serve cottage gardens is the brown one. The pipe out falls into the adopted sewer running west onto Brindle Road. The applicant proposes surface water. Um, there's no possibility of filtration drainage and we've had a ground investigation report for that and all local water courses are in third party ownership. So the next preferred solution as dictated by the National Planning Policy Framework is to drain into the existing surface water sewer which runs through the site Lancashire at the local lead flood authority are happy with that approach. In terms of foul sewerage, the applicant will connect into the exist adopted foul sewer in cottage gardens, the brown one as noted before, and although it's located under an adopted highway, there's no reason why this can't be implemented. The delivery can be secured by an appropriately worded condition and legal agreement with the United Utilities. During committee, one member asked for drainage to come through the wider site allocation and not through cottage gardens, but there is no policy requirement to do so and therefore no legal re reason to insist on drainage running in one direction or another. It is commonplace to dig up roads to allow drainage condition connections, but if damage is done to the public highway, Lancashire County Council have the powers to inspect and require it to be made good. Also, it, also, it's nationally accepted that disruption during the construction phase is a temporary nuisance and it's not a material planning consideration worthy of refusal on this basis alone. Um, I know there are a number of objectors last time who had concerns. We've had four objections, all noted in the report, and one late representation. Um, no statutory objections, subject to conditions, and as the scheme is fully compliant with adopted policy, we would recommend approval with conditions with a decision delegated to the vice chair, the chairman and the director of planning until completion of a legal agreement relating to a public open space contribution. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, uh, Debbie. Uh, we do have two registered objectors with us this evening, dialing in. Do we have a... Peter Carter. Yes, I'm here. Okay, if you'd like to make your representations, you've got four minutes, okay? Thank you. My name's Peter Carter. I live at 22 Cottage Gardens. You may have heard or will hear this evening that this application is part of Cottage Gardens and people will go to great lengths to make you believe the same. But I'm sure after my speech, you'll be in no doubt this application is in site S. Regarding the drainage philosophy sheet, Joe Crest has supplied, the existing foul sewer and surface water drains were constructed in 2000, not 2003. The proposed sewer connection is not like most sites that have to drain into a nearby road with minimal disruption, but is 35 metres back up Cottage Gardens as the photos, which I hope you've all received, show. Sure. Strangely, this figure is not on the drainage philosophy. What I find puzzling is that if this piece of land was going to be developed in the future, surely the simplest thing while all the sewers were being put in and with the surface water drain running right down cottage gardens through the proposed site to the outfall drain on the persimmon part of site S, why on earth would you not run a sewage pipe in the same cutting and up to the boundary of this land while the road was dug up and have a simple connection later? We feel the reason this was not done was because when Cottage Garden was completed in early 2002, it was a finished site with no intention of this so-called extension or the latest tag, Phase 2 of Cottage Gardens ever taking place. On the drainage philosophy plan, I've got to say, I've never seen such blazing red boundaries to a site that do their best to cut it off from site S and make it part of Cottage Gardens. Cottage Gardens was approved in 1999, 
and it was approved as a standalone site, completed early in 2002. In part of Mrs. Roberts' report 1-3, she says the development will be accessed from and become an extension of cottage gardens. Even in the Working Woodlands survey carried out for Doorcrest Homes, they say the cottage gardens face two sides. For the 19 years I've lived here, there's been a wooden fence across that side that has been maintained by residents and separated this part of Site S from Cottage Gardens. It was erected when the site was completed in early 2002 and Dolcrest have taken it upon themselves to remove part of the fence and in its place fix a glaring bright metal gate to an opening in the proposed Site S. These gates are now the first thing you see on entry to the quiet cul-de-sac and really are a blot on the landscape. Neighbours are puzzled as to why they've been erected before planning approval have been given. The arrogance of Dorcrest regarding this planning application being approved and the way they want it to look with the gates on the site is quite disturbing. In part of Mrs Roberts' report 1-4, she says the site forms part of a wider tract of land allocated as site S by the local plan D1. In reply to Mrs Roberts regarding strategic housing comments, Susan Blundell says this site is allocated for residential development in the South Ribble local plan under policy D1 and is part of the wider Site S allocation. It could not be much clearer that this land is part of Site S and has nothing at all to connect it to cottage gardens and should be treated as such. Our two plans of the Bellway and Persimmon site you have received show clearly this is in the middle of the two sites and in the future could quite easily be blended in to the Persimmon part of Site S. If Dorcrest homes need to develop this land, then it should be developed for what it is part of, Site S, not an extension or any other wording of cottage gardens. And I urge the committee to refuse this application. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Carter. Uh, do we have a Matt Jones with us? Yes, Chairman. Good evening. Good evening, members. Good evening. If you'd like to make your representations, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for the opportunity to address members on this application. I have been a resident of Cottage Gardens since 2001, and I am a qualified solicitor with over 20 years' experience of advising local authority planning committees. Although not made entirely clear in the officer report, nor in the officer address this evening, this proposal will result in the cutting down of no less than 44 poplar and oak trees protected by a tree preservation order. However, of course, members will be acutely aware of just how extraordinary and unusual the request to, dis to destroy 44 protected trees and their associated habitat is particularly where the request is made simply to allow a developer to maximise the number of units on a development site. And what is so concerning here is that page 14 of the applicant's own tree assessment reveals that just one of the protected trees falls into an assessment category that actually warrants its removal due to its tree condition, category U. That same assessment tells us that all the remaining protected trees are healthy and that 21 of the popular trees, i.e. nearly half of the protected trees, fall into the second highest category for tree quality assessment, category B, meaning that the trees have a life expectancy of more than 20 years and have a material conservation and landscape value. What is also illuminating for members is the reason and timing of the tree preservation order itself. The officer report informs us that the order was made only six years ago in 2014. It was made just as Site S was being proposed to be released from safeguarded status. The order was made because the council had determined that the legal tests for the preservation of the trees were met taking into account their visual amenity and the function of the trees within the local landscape. A key factor here is that the trees offer long-term significant tree screening between the proposed development sites within Site S and Cottage Gardens. 
given that permission has now been granted on appeal for housing developments to the north, east and west of the site, comprising 500 units, the need for the retention of protected trees is even more pressing. Accordingly, members can justifiably consider that the council's tree specialist was correct when he said that as a matter of planning policy principle, the removal of the 44 trees is contrary to local plan policy G13, which seeks to protect trees from development, save where the loss of trees is unavoidable. Plainly, the loss of trees is avoidable. The developer simply has to work within the constraints of the site, as indicated to the developer by the council when it made the TPO just six years ago. The site can be both developed and the protected trees saved. The developer simply has to scale back the number of units proposed for this site. The proposed planting of a limited number of small stature trees, which isn't even on a two for one basis as required by policy, does not make the application compliant and does not mitigate the loss of mature, healthy, protected trees. On this occasion, members are justified to take a different view to their planning officers and to reject this application on the basis of, on the basis of that it is contrary to policy for the following reason. That the proposal will result in the avoidable loss of protected trees and the proposed mitigation does not overcome the harm caused by the loss of protected trees, contrary to policy G13 of the adopted local plan. Even if the developer were to appeal, this reason for refusal would likely stand scrutiny and in any event, a refusal may well, well see the developer coming back with a policy compliant application. Okay, Mr Jones, you've, you've had just over four minutes, you need to tie up, please. I'll, certainly, Chairman, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, conclude now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, members will be aware that this the issue of trees is not a closed matter, or despite what uh, your officers said earlier. Um, paragraph 1.1 of your report uh, explains that the matter was deferred from uh, committee in July to seek clarity over a number of issues, including the tree issue. Plainly, the issue of trees isn't concluded and must be addressed by members this evening. I would therefore urge members to reject this application in its current form. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thanks for that, Mr Jones. Uh, Debbie. Is there a tree preservation order on these trees, please? Thank you, uh, Chair. Yes, we'll go backwards then with the comments. Um, with regards to trees, yes, there are, and it's noted in the report. And the Council's arborist did object to loss of those trees initially. The applicants supplied us with a much better landscaping plan, replacement plan, um, and taking into account the applicant's own tree report, which said that there's an increasing risk of root failure in high, wind, high winds, which would impact both new and existing dwellings, the Council's arborist is happy with the new planting scheme and loss of the protected trees. Um, with regards to Mr Carter's comments, um, I, we've not. I, the report doesn't say that this scheme is part of cottage gardens, only that it will be accessed from and the road itself will become part of the cottage gardens road. And that, that's true. Um, Drainage, United Utilities and the Local Leaf Flood Authority are both satisfied with the approach that's been put forward, subject to a little bit more detail. We've got the basic principle here and this is not, nothing unusual. Um, and whilst Mr Carter might, he's mentioned previous schemes and yes, possibly previous developers might have dealt with this in a different way. But the fact remains, we need to look at this scheme as it stands in front of us um, and the drainage as put forward by the developer. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, Debbie. OK, um, I have a registered member not on committee. Councillor Jim Marsh. Uh, Councillor Jim Marsh hasn't actually dialed in, so I presume he doesn't want to speak on the issue. Um, OK, we have the applicant stroke agent, Christy MacDonald, would you like to speak? Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me OK? Yes, we can all hear you over here. Excellent, thank you. Uh, members of the Planning Committee, I do not intend to take up too much of your time unnecessarily this evening because the case officer dealing with this planning application has produced a highly detailed and robust report which covers all the relevant material planning considerations 
and the report clearly shows that there are no valid planning reasons why planning permission should not be granted subject to the signing of the Section 106 agreement. By way of a brief introduction, my name is Christy McDonald and I'm a Chartered Town Planning Consultant for Stephen Abbott Associates, LLP. When this application was before the Planning Committee last time, I was not instructed by the applicant and had no previous dealings with the application. But after it was deferred, I was instructed to review the application and provide advice, advice on what the application was lacking and if there were any amendments that I would suggest. After reviewing the scheme and all the relevant submission documents, it was my professional advice that the application was worthy of approval without any amendments being made. However, it was appreciated that questions had been raised by local residents and members about the drainage at the last meeting and that no drainage details had been submitted at that point. Therefore, to provide local residents and members with some comfort on this the issue of drainage, a broad drainage strategy has now been submitted to the Council and the lead local flood authority. The lead local flood authority have since responded, confirming that they have no objection to the approach proposed in the strategy. Given this, there are no technical objections to the planning application. This includes the Highways Authority and the Council's Arborist, who have both been fully consulted on the proposals. I understand that, council, that concerns have also been raised about the condition of the access road and potential damage to it during the construction stage. Whilst the exi existing condition of the road is the responsibility of Lancashire County Council's the Highways Authority, the applicant has confirmed that in the event of any damage being caused to the road by construction vehicles or anything else, the road will be repaired and made good by Dorbcrest Homes. All cottage gardens have been photographed for this, these purposes to ensure that the road is left back in the same condition. I am also of the understanding that my client, Dimpner Boylan from Dorbcrest Home, has walked the road with Mr Carter, a resident who has just spoken and lives close to the application site. She has listened to his concerns and she explained to him in person that any damage caused by the construction vehicles or anything else during the construction phase will be repaired. I do not think that I need to take up any, any more of your valuable time and it is hoped that you agree the officer's recommendation and grant planning permission for the 11 houses. Thank you again for your time. Okay, thanks for that, Christy McDonald. Thank you. Okay, I'm now going to bring the application into committee. If you wish to speak, please either unmute your mic or use the chat button. Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I remember this one from last time. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. And I know what the report's saying, but I'm uncomfortable with what I'm hearing here. Um, I, once again, the challenge for all of us is we've got a policy compliant application, which we're being told, but there are some ambiguities. There's some ambiguities in terms of the um, the local plan in terms of cheap tree protection. This looks like a development of convenience, which I think the applicant probably, I understand, I don't think there's any uh, malice in what they've done here, but it, but you can clearly see that it fits with an extension of an existing cul-de-sac. Mr Jones and Mr Carter have articulated um, their views very well and, you know, we're here to sort of help and endorse as much as we can balance in terms of <coughs> our residents. Um, but to see 44 trees getting cut down like what's being proposed in an area which is surrounded for development with no trees at all, seems seems it just doesn't seem right there's something something in congress something something inconsistent here um and it looks like it might be a development of convenience through an existing access position rather than site s which is being identified for development which is another way so um i'm just going to reserve my view for now but i am uncomfortable with some elements of this application thank you okay thanks councillor flannery councillor barry yates Right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just before I move on, I just want to correct the officer. Uh, part of the uh, deferment was because in the last uh, agenda, it was a standalone item saying that uh, Pregson Lane, this piece of, sorry, Cottage Gardens and this piece of land was a standalone item. Uh, I'm glad that we've, we've moved on from there. And also just to, just to say that, um, us as members of the committee, even though information is online, we shouldn't have to go looking for it. Um, 
going down blind alleys looking for, for stuff. It should be all in our report so that we can make a proper decision from the report in front of us, not have to go rooting round all over to try and find other information. On saying that, uh, Chairman, I'll just uh, give you a, a little bit of history of, of CITES. And CITES came in in to in um, a long well in the last local plan. Now the CITES came to the committee some years ago. The site S development entrance and access was passed by this planning committee to be accessed from Brindle Road. No mention of uh, Cottage Gardens. All of site S is down, if we look back through the records, has to be accessed off Brindle Road. So that, that is my first uh, remark on that one. Now that everyone accepts that the application site, site is in site S and that South River Local Plan shows the application in site S and that it clearly states on page 56 1.4 along with the South River housing noting that the site is in site S I have the following comments uh, concerns to make. Cottage Gardens Estate was completed over 18 years ago and is not part of the application site, as stated in the local plan. With the site being part of site S, then the entrance to the site should be on site S and access from the ongoing development on site S. All trees I uh, agree with the first speaker, the, all, all the trees have got PTO on and there's just one tree that uh, is, has got a bit of ill health and could do with removing. And I think the PTO on all the trees should be with health um, that we shouldn't remove any of those trees. I'll move on. Uh, reason I would like to give the refusal for this application, if members um, agree to it or that the entrance to site S will be detrimental to the character and out, outlay of the established Scottish Gardens estate. Two, the application is on site S and the entrance to the site will be better placed on the application site so that the established separate estate of Cottage Gardens is not disturbed by increased vehicle movements. And three is that the PTO stands for all trees on the development site and they should not be removed. I stress that, Chairman, that uh, if we look back through planning history and just go back to when, the, and it's not long ago, that we passed the site S site, we passed all site S to be entered, enter and exit from Brindle Road, not from Cottage Gardens. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, um, Councillor Yates. You're tabling an amendment for refusal, yes? Councillor Yates. Sorry, Mr Chairman. Uh, I'm proposing refusal. It is an amendment, yes. yes. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Yates. Councillor Watson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I do, well, I'd like to associate myself with the comments of uh, Councillor Flannery and Councillor Yates as well, uh, but I do have a few concerns with the application. Um, as has been mentioned, it's clearly part of site S. Uh, the roads and so on of Cottage Gardens, the, it clearly isn't designed uh, with the, the idea of extending it onto this site um, based on the way it's laid out. Uh, I appreciate highways have said that um, access is acceptable, but there are two very narrow points as you come immediately on to Cottage Gardens and turn right and then as you go past the houses that lead on to the site, they are very narrow. Um, I do believe the drainage and sewage and could be accessed through uh, Site S as uh, I would have assumed it would have been done so as the fact that everything was coming off of Brindle Road. Um, in addition, as uh, Councillor Yates has mentioned, the uh, access from Brindle Road 
going through site S to this site seems a better way of doing it rather than disrupting uh, cottage gardens, which is uh, separate to it. Um, the tree preservation order um, is clearly one of my biggest concerns. Um, I recall when I was listening in to the uh, previous meeting where this was mentioned, uh, there was a mention of poplars life expectancy being very short and, and generally, yeah, this is true. Uh, they, uh, uh, they do tend to grow fast and die fairly young. Um, but I did a, so I've done a little bit of research. I, I've been onto the site to look at them. Um, I've gathered some of the leaves. I, I, I admit I'm not an arborist, but uh, the, uh, they appear to be black poplars, uh, which are on this site that are under the tree preservation order. Um, they tend to live to about 200 years, those particular trees. Um, so they are actually quite substantially long lived for poplars if they are that tree type. In addition, they're actually quite rare in this country. There's only 7,000 of them in the uh, in the UK, uh, of which only 600 are female. So that's a concern. I'd, I'd like to see if it was if they were black poplars, of course, uh, there's even more reason um, for them to be under the tree preservation order and for them not to be removed. And I'm worried about the precedent it sets if we do start removing trees under tree preservation orders just to fit more houses onto a site. Um, finally, uh, I have a, another concern, which is, of course, this is a separate developer uh, getting 11 houses on, which means it doesn't have to meet the affordable housing threshold. This obviously then removes a, num a certain number from the main site S development, which means that potentially you could have less houses, sorry, affordable houses, uh, built as a whole on the actual site. So it could almost be a way to potentially reduce the amount of affordable housing that the main site developer is is looking to actually uh, create. And obviously we have a substantial need for uh, affordable housing um, in the area. So I, I believe that's it's certainly something that concerns me. Uh, that, that's everything, thank you very much. Oh, uh, sorry, I'd like to second, of course, uh, 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 Councillor Yates's. Uh, okay, thanks for that, Councillor Watson. Thank you. If I can just point out that on the development of 11 houses, you don't have to supply any affordable homes, okay? Just for future reference. Yeah, sorry, that's what I, that's my point I was making, Chair, was that, that you don't have to do so, which means that you can remove those 11 houses from the main developed site S, which reduces the amount overall as a percentage. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your... So you're seconding refusal? Yes, yes Chair, thank you. Okay, uh, right, do we have any other proposals? Anybody else wishing to speak? Councillor Smith? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I have the same reservations I had last time, to be quite honest, um, with regard to the trees. I think it's it's, 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 it's appalling that they chop 40 odd trees down. Um, I think the arboriculturist has got it seriously wrong. I'm not an arboriculturist, but you know, um, it, it just does not look right. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't feel right. Um, regard to the highways, well, we all know county highways, and you know, Chair, that uh, county highways don't get it right every time. And I think this is another occasion where they've uh, where they've got it wrong. Um, regard to some of the comments that are made. Um, which concerned me, uh, I have to say, that um, it's almost as if the planning committee should not question some of the decisions. Um, and I don't like that. What I don't accept it at all. I think that's what we're here for, uh, to do it in a proper and a constructive way if we can. Um, and, and it is it's up to here's us to, to question the decisions. So thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Smith. Uh, Jonathan Nold. Th thanks, Chair. Uh, just, just a few comments on that. I think there's three reasons for refusal um, pr proposed. Um, so what, one's obviously relating to the um, the highways. We, we've obviously got the views of county highways and, and they're saying it's, it's technically safe to achieve that access. I've just been having another read of the local plan um, on, on site S and, and, and what, it, what it doesn't say is, is it talks about having Two, two separate accesses in there, but it doesn't specifically say that that shouldn't be from cottage gardens. Um, so that, that's quite open in, in terms of what, what the local local plan says. So I think I think that one will be quite 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 weak move, moving forward. Um, there's obviously the drainage issue. We've got comments from the local lead flood authority saying that there's a technical solution there that, that works. Uh, and then the final one is is, is the trees, um, and, and I think out of the three reasons for refusal proposed, that's probably the strongest um, what one that's that's there. Um, we have got the views from our our um, in-house ar arborist who, who 
who's very much looking at it from the health of the, the trees that are covered by the order at the moment. And I think his, his view is that, that some of those are, aren't in good health anyway and may, may well die, die in the future potentially anyway. So he's coming from that, that angle. But I, I think if members were looking for a reason for refuse, that's probably the strongest one where, where, where I think there, there is an argument to potentially be, be, be made on that. Okay, thanks for that, Jonathan. I think the may die isn't a strong enough argument for me. They are going to die at some point. But, Debbie, did you want to come back in or not? No. Uh, I've got Councillor Hesketh. And then I have Councillor Adams. Right, thank you, Mr Chairman. When I uh, saw this site uh, come forward a few weeks ago, I was un unhappy with it, and uh, I still am. But uh, <clears throat> we had three of our concerns answered by the county consultants who said that the application was acceptable. So now this it really leaves us in a dilemma because uh, the reasons for deferral in July have been clarified. So it does leave me in limbo, really, Mr Chairman, as to which way I support. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Hesketh. Councillor Will Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at this. I mean, I, I, we, I've heard all the comments so far from uh, committee members, and I do agree with most of them. I just, I'm struggling with the TPOs and going against the TPOs. I mean, what, what's the point in having them if we're just able to cut them down? For me, that doesn't make any sense. It's not beneficial for the uh, local residents and goes against even policy at um, for this current administration at the council regarding tree planting. I ju it, it just feels very uncomfortable to me and I'm, I'm disappointed that the developer has, has gone down this route and, and put us in a position like this. For me, if, if there's TPOs there, then they need to be respected. Okay, thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Barry Yates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just going back on Jonathan's comment, uh, unfortunately, Jonathan, you you're not correct there. It's because it, when we went for both sites, Borbis and, uh, and and Persimmon, we we looked at the entrance, and we said that the entrances have to be for the off both sites. There would be two entrances, in fact, like you're right, but only on off Brindle Road. We never mentioned whatsoever about any entrance coming through Cottage Gardens. So you're totally wrong there. I'm sorry to have to inform you. Um, I've been on the council planning committee for 30 years now, and uh, I've got a bit of a good memory. And that that is there. And when we put site S into the local plan, John Eskew was, was on it as well, and so was Cliff Hughes and, and myself. And we put site S as one, one application site, with the, and then we had to wait for the planning to come forward to say where we were going to put entrance and exit. Cottage Gardens never has, never ever has been part of site S and should be excluded completely um, from that, from any <laughs> any talk about side tests, it is not part of side tests. So please look again, Jonathan, at your uh, at your local plan, and please have a look at the other applications and get back to me. Thank you. No, you don't need to do that now, but I would like an explanation sometime in the week. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank, thanks, Councillor Yates. I, I'd like to get home before 11 o'clock tonight, so he's not doing it now. All right. Um, do we have anyone else wishing to speak? Because we've had we've had a proposal for an amendment, not for approval, but for refusal. And we've had a seconder, Councillor Watson. Um, so if we have no more proposals, uh, Taz, did you want to come in? Uh, yes, Chair. Just uh, for clarification purposes, please, can you just provide us with the detailed reasons for refusal, please? Do you want them again? I've given you once. Yeah, I can give them you again. Uh, 
One, the entrance to just, the sky just, just so that everybody knows, Councillor Yates, and yeah, that so everybody knows sorry. what you're voting yeah, on. Sorry, I, I wasn't being funny there. I thought you got them, you know, last time I entered them out. So, yeah. uh, sorry, which uh, policy as well? Which policy uh, are you relying on as well, please? Right. The entrance to the site of CITES would be detrimental to the character and layout of the establishment, established cottage gardens estate. Uh, the application to the the application on site S, the entrance to the site will be better placed on the application site, so that it established separate estate of cottage gardens is not disturbed by increased vehicle movement, movements. And thirdly, all the uh, the trees uh, that are protected with the PTO should not uh, be disturbed. Now, if you don't know what the uh, policies are there, um, I'm sure you don't want me to, to go through them and let you let planning officers know their own policies because they're already there. Use D1 for one if you wish. I'm, I'm led to believe that the policy that's been relied on is policy G13, is that correct? For the trees aspect, yes. Thank you. Right, okay. Um, so we're going to be voting on refusal. Um, okay, I'm going to do this alphabetically. So Taz, will you just reiterate what we're actually voting on, please. So, Chair, uh, in respect of um, this matter, it's the refusal uh, for the erection of 11 dwellings with associated works at Land at Cottage Gardens, Bamber Bridge. OK, if, if everyone's clear about that, we're voting on refusal, not approval. OK, I'll start with Councillor Will Adams. For Councillor James Flannery. For Councillor Mary Green. For refusal. Councillor Harry Hancock. For Councillor John Hesketh. For for Councillor Hesketh, are you for refusal? Yeah, I should be connected. I'm for. Yes, for refusal. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Councillor Amelia. For refusal. Councillor Smith. For refusal. Councillor Watson. For refusal. Councillor Yates. Definitely for refusal. And I'm abstaining. Okay, so the vote is... The vote is carried for refusal, Chair. Okay, so that application has been refused. Okay, item number nine this evening, it's land between Lime Road and the Causey Penwitham. You probably all re remember this from the last committee meeting, apart from obviously our new members. Okay, over to you, Janice. Right, thank you, Chair. So, members will recall this application came before committee at the last meeting on the 21st of September. So, just to recap, the application site fronts onto the newly opened stretch of the Causey in Lostock Hall. It forms part of the wider development of uh, allocated site K, <coughs> which was the former Lostock Hall gas works site, which is to the north and east. To the west is an area of development land known as Penwitham Mills. So this is just a view of the site looking southwards towards the Causey. And then this is another view of the site. At present, the site's been used as a material storage compound. So the application proposes 12 detached dwellings with access off Lime Road. This shows the proposed layout. The internal road layout is not with 
that is not to an adopted standard and would therefore remain private. So this relates to the shaded part only. So you can see this part here and along there. So county highways have no objection to this and have confirmed they would not normally adopt a road serving less than five dwellings. In this case, the road serves four dwellings, plots four, five, six and seven, with the other plots accessed directly off Lime Road or Furs Drive. So this is just an example uh, of the houses. This is the Oxford house type and all the house types are those used on the wider development site K. You see these are the properties on the opposite side of Lime Road, just to give an example of the newly constructed properties and they're of a similar style and design. <clears throat> so immediately adjacent to the site are plots 146 and 147 of the wider development. The rear elevations will face the side elevation of plot 5. Initially a pair of semi-detached dwellings were proposed to this plot, but they failed to meet the spatial separation distances normally required. So the replacement with a single detached dwelling with attached garage now meets the required spatial separation distances. Letters of objection have been received from the neighbouring residents in terms of overlooking and loss of privacy and they understood that the site was to be for community and leisure use as a local centre with a car parking area immediately to their rear. So this is an excerpt from the site's master plan showing retail and leisure uses. Following the committee meeting at the 21st of September, the applicants have confirmed the master plan was an illustrative master plan and submitted as part of the outline application but there was no policy requirement for a master plan and therefore it cannot be viewed in the same way as a master plan for the major development sites such as the test track or the Pickering's farm where a master plan is a policy requirement. Nor, that, nor is there any policy requirement to provide a local centre for the wider gas work site. The outline permission which the master plan was part of has now expired and therefore the master plan carries very li limited weight in determining this application. There's no policy requirement to market the site for local centre uses and no marketing has been undertaken. The submitted retail report to support, support the application concluded that there was no demand for such a local centre use, particularly given the amount of retail provision in the area, both existing and the Lidl's proposal for the Penwith and Mill site opposite. That retail report was being, has been considered by consultants acting for the council, who do not consider there are sufficient grounds to restrict additional residential development at the site, and that residents at the former Luster Coal Gaswork, Gaswork site and surrounding area would still have sufficient choice with the existing defined centres in the area. Therefore, the application is recommended for approval, but subject to a Section 106 agreement for off-site public open space contribution. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for your report, Janice. Uh, obviously, it was here in front of us last month and we deferred it and you've come back and told us what I thought you might do. Uh, with no registered speakers on this application, I have no members not on committee wanting to speak and I don't have an applicant or an agent wishing to speak. I must say though, I drove over the Causey on Saturday, I was well impressed. I went from Higher Walton to Lost a Call in about two minutes. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to open up to committee, any committee members wishing to speak? Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. You probably already know what I'm going to say. Uh, just, I'm just very disappointed. I know there's not really much we can do from a legal point of view as from, from a council and as a committee. Uh, I'm just very disappointed that uh, the, the developer hasn't gone through with the um, the initial master plan uh, and provide uh, some kind of retail or leisure space for, for that community. 
I understand where, where we are. I'm very disappointed with that. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the law is what it is. And I think um, with the government's new white paper, I think it's going to be even more difficult to uh, to, 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 to do things like this. So um, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed. Um, we're, we're, we are where we are. But unfortunately, I understand that from a legal point of view, there's, there isn't much we can do to uh, refuse this application regarding that. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, Councillor Adams. Could you repeat the last your last sentence? So I didn't get it. Sorry, Chair. I was just saying that I was just I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, this is uh, the position we've, we've been put in, and I know from a, a legal context, there isn't much we can do as a committee to to stop this application. We got, um, you know, on the basis of the, uh, the developer not carrying out its initial master plan master plan pledge. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> just like some confirmation, really, from the uh, the officer on on a couple of things. Um, the houses that are proposed are they facing the causey, or is it the back to the causey? I couldn't quite see it on the plan, but I think for me it's important that they actually face the causey if that's it, and it and it keeps the sort of the highway and and the vista, if you like, along there. Uh, that's I think that's important. Um, <clears throat> And with regard to, um, I think, w what you said with a statement from the uh, developer um, that um, there was no need, um, uh, there was no master plan. The master plan has expired, and I'm reading the thing. It's quite clear, I think, really. And, and, but that, that is the developer's opinion. Is that the opinion of the planners as well? Janice, if you want to. Yeah, we sought some legal advice on, on the status of the outline permission and the master plan. And obviously it wasn't um, very fair, well, it wasn't in our favour. So, yeah, we did we did check that out. And what about the, the way housing. the house is going to face? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm just showing Councillor Smith that they um, they do face onto the cause. They face onto the Some of them do. That one's sort of side on. Those face. That's sort of at an angle. <coughs> it's on the corner. Yeah. So it, it's a mixed bag. How how many face onto the cause? On the, 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 there's about six houses at the front. And... Yeah. There's. Um, there's one that's sideways on, two that face the cosy, and one that's sort of on the corner. Right. Okay, Councillor Smith. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. okay. Do I have Councillor Mary Green? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just just the inquiry. You mentioned uh, there was a proposal, probably for a, for a little law or some some shop similar to that. How? much down the line are we how secure are we that, that they would be getting that type of shop there because if not there are no local centres because they've used the land for these houses and that was promised as an amenity to serve all the new residents i'm just conscious of the fact if there's no shops there whatsoever it's all right saying in the report they're a mile or a mile and a half from tardy gate but there's nobody going to walk a mile a mile and a half uh, to do a, some shopping, they're going to jump in the cars, go to Tardigate, which is going to cause a massive impact on Tardigate for the shops, parking, traffic, and exasperate the pollution problems. So, you know, if, if you've got an answer back, if there's a little or something quite proposed that it's quite secure, that's fine. But otherwise, if there's no amenity, I'm just concerned on the impact of the local area. Thank you. Yeah, you'd like to come in, Catherine, wouldn't you? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just to answer the questions that Councillor Green has raised, um, I think there has been a press release and there's been some consultation about a potential application to come in for Penwith and Mills, mm -hmm. and that potentially will include 
a supermarket. Mm -hmm. The application isn't yet with us, but we were advised last week that it would be submitted kind of imminently towards mm -hmm. the end of October, which is only in a couple of weeks. Um, but that, that's the latest advice we've got, but we haven't got an application in front of us at this moment in time. Okay, thanks for that, Catherine. Are you happy with that, Councillor Green? Yeah, as far as we can be, yes. I would have liked further assurances. Obviously, I don't know if the, the officers can look at that as soon as it comes in. It might be before they move on too much with the developers, if we can look at that. I think that would be quite crucial to help the local area. Okay, thanks for that. Councillor Barry Yates. Councillor Yates, you, you muted, you muted, Barry. Right, well, sorry, Chair. Um, can I move approval, Chair? I agree with all the comments that's, uh, that the other council has got, uh, but, uh, and, and I'll go along with what Councillor Adams said at the beginning. Um, he was absolutely right there, but there is no way uh, we could refuse this, so I'll move approval, Chair. Thanks very much, Councillor Yates. Councillor Phil Smith. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I was going to move approval uh, or, or second, depending on what Councillor Adams has said before. But I think we all agree and we're all a bit disappointed. But, um, you know, what, what we've got on the report now is that we've got to go with it. So I'll, uh, I'll second the approval. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Smith. Councillor Flannery. Just a quick one from me. Um, yeah, I, I'm disappointed too. There's, there's something disingenuous about this. Um, people have been sold homes in front of this area which thought it was going to be something else and then it's going to turn into something which they didn't expect. And I agree with what my other um, committee members have said in terms of the retail offer, although the retail report does, isn't here, but we're sort of led to believe that that's correct. But just one query, please, for our officers. Um, it says here in item 10.3 on page 96 that... Um, in terms of last time we had a query regarding the adoptable status of the road and it was saying here that this is contrary to policy G17. So are we saying here we, we are being advised to approve something which is contrary to our policy? Uh, Janice, if you'd like to come in. Yeah, policy G17 at criteria C does mention that roads must be to an adoptable standard. But the problem here is that county highways won't adopt a, a road that's five dwellings or less. So there's a bit of conflict there. Um, th there's quite a few of these sort of little roads. They're like little cul-de-sacs at the end. They're usually done in different um, finishes, like pavings. Sometimes the the bricks instead of the tarmac and, and the sort of serve like a little cluster of dwellings and they're quite commonplace in the borough on, on these modern estates but they're not adopted and you know so there is a slight bit of conflict there between what our policy says but what county highways would adopt. So Janice is it correct then if there was 12 properties built there they would adopt it? It, we're only talking about the five dwellings that are on that stretch of road. The others are accessed off adoptable roads. So, so there's just the four dwellings. The others on this application are all accessed off either Lime Road or mm -hmm. First Drive, which are adoptable. Okay, uh, Stephen, if you'd like yeah, to come in. Just to sort of clarify on that, this dates back to a document called Design Bulletin 32, which I think started in, in the 1980s where they said you could have five houses served off the private drive. But what the policy is doing is picking up saying that the road has to be built to a standard that's capable of being adopted, but it doesn't have to say that they would adopt it. So in other words, it's the, the quality of the construction. So you're not having like a, a gravel driveway serving five properties. It's saying that it, it has to be robust into that standard, but not necessarily it would be adopted. Yeah. All right, Councillor Smith, did you want to come back? 
uh, just a comment, I suppose. I mean, Janice is quite right. The, the, there are lots of these uh, throughout the borough, um, and you normally only get involved with them as local councillors about 20 years down the line when they want resurfacing, and uh, you've got to get all the neighbours to agree and put their hand in the pocket, and that's a really difficult stage, and, and it becomes a, a big mediation point between the councillors and the residents at the time, so it is a bit awkward. Okay, Councillor Hesketh, would you like to come in? Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. We can only take an application as it comes before us, not an application that we would like it to be. Uh, but I, I, I think that we have to go along with it, Mr Chairman. I think we're, uh, you know, that's the only line that we can take tonight. Thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor Hesketh. Um, right, I've got a proposal for approval I have a seconder for approval. Do I have any other proposals from members on committee? No. Okay, we'll go to the vote. Councillor Will Adams. Uh, yes, yes, approval, Chair. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Flannery. Abstain. Councillor Mary Green. For approval. Councillor Harry Hancock. Approve. Councillor John Hesketh. For approval. Councillor Amelia. For. Councillor Phil Smith. For. Councillor Gareth Watson. For. Councillor Barry Yates. For approval, Chair. Yeah, and um, I, I too am for approval. Uh, Taz, will you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? So the motion is carried and uh, planning permission has been uh, granted for the proposed development at land between Lime Road and the Cosy. Okay, thanks very much for that, Taz. Uh, before we move on to item 10, I, the chair needs a comfort break. So if anybody else, I'm, I'm not going to say come and join me. I'm... <laughs>
Right, okay, if we can move on to um, agenda item number 10, which is 14A, Liverpool Road, Penwitham, and uh, Janice will present the report. Thanks, Janice. Thank you, Chair. So this application relates to 14A, Liverpool Road. <clears throat> the property is within the Penwitham District Centre, close to the busy crossroads junction of Liverpool Road, Priory Lane and Cot Lane. So the property is one of three units formed from the subdivision and refurbishment of the former Booth supermarket. Permission was granted for two A1 retail units and one A3 restaurant. Unit 1 was then granted a change of use from retail to a drinking establishment at the 23rd of October 2019 planning committee meeting and it became the Gin Jar Ale. The middle unit has remained in retail use. The third unit is a restaurant known as 1260 Craft and Crust. So additionally, number 16 was also granted a change of use from a cafe to a drinking establishment at the same committee meeting on the 23rd of October. The same meeting as the Ginger Ale. So a number of conditions were imposed on the change of use permission with condition 9 restricting the hours of use to the outside area to between uh, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. and condition 10 requiring that the tables and chairs be removed by 6 p.m. The proposal now is to vary conditions 9 and 10 to extend the hours of use to the outside area until 8 p.m. The extension in hours will bring the premises in line with number 16. So members may recall the debate at the October 2019 meeting where for the application at 16 Liverpool Road, they agreed to amend the recommended hours, those were recommended by Environmental Health, uh, for the outside area, effectively by two hours longer. The aim was to achieve consistency in terms of hours of use between similar venues in Penwitham. However, the application, the subject of this application, the um, had already been voted on when that discussion took place. So it has already been voted on. The hours as per recommendation were, were accepted. So mm -hmm. that resulted in this disparity between the two neighbouring premises. So in terms of this application, environmental health have raised no objections to the extension until 8pm, but would not accept an extension until 10pm. As part of the application, the, the applicant had wanted the flexibility to extend till 10pm, but they won't accept that. That's due to residential properties at first floor. So this application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for your pre presentation, Janice. Um, we don't have any registered speakers. We have no members not on committee wishing to speak. We don't have the applicant or the agent wishing to speak, so I will bring it into committee, uh, Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, just more than ever, <coughs> we have a responsibility to, to enable and do what we can to support our small businesses in the borough. Uh, and examples like this, <coughs> excuse me, are where exactly what we need to be doing. So I thank the officer for the, for the report. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting all, all of us in all different ways, but small businesses are being affected more, more than most, as we can, will all hear in the press only today. So it's good to see a bit of consistency. We've got three establishments all adjacent to each other. I think in terms of fairness, we need balance between planning, um, licensing and environmental health. So on that basis, Chair, I move approval for this application. Thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor Flannery. I have Councillor Smith. Uh, yes, the, the application makes a huge amount of sense, uh, Chair. I'll, I'll second, uh, second the proposal. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Smith. Councillor Hesketh. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'll go along with the comments. I was going to say the same. Thank you. 
Councillor Will Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, very straightforward for me. Uh, brings it in line with the other premises that are close by to it uh, and ensures fairness, which is uh, what we should be uh, all be about, particularly in these uncertain times. So I'd, uh, I'd support the uh, approval. Thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor Adams. Do we have any other proposals? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go along with this because it brings it in line with the other premises along this stretch. Great, thanks Thank for that. You. Okay, we don't have any other proposals, do we? No? Okay, we'll go to the votes. Um, Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Flannery. Four. Councillor Mary Green. Four. Councillor Harry, Councillor Harry Hancock. Four. Councillor John Hesketh. Four approval. Councillor Amelia. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. For approval. Councillor Gareth Watson. For approval. Councillor Barry Yates. For approval, Chair. Thank you. I am also for approval. It brings parity. Thanks. Okay. Sorry. Ta uh, sorry, Taz, would you um, do the scores on the doors? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, so that is a unanimous vote in respect of the variation of conditions 9 and 10 uh, um, of planning approval in respect of 14A Liverpool Road. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for thanks very much for that, Taz. Um, item number 11 on the agenda this evening, land off Shawbrook Road and Alt Culane, Leyland. Uh, Catherine Lewis, would you present the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Members may recall planning permission has been granted for a large Apologies, we're just putting the presentation up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Members may recall planning permission has been granted for a large housing development up to 400 units. Um, it's at Leyland Lane and the outline was granted in 2017. It's known as Site P in the local plan and this is the red edge that relates to part of that site. The approval for details for 232 units constructed by Red Row came in in 2018 and was approved. And this current application seeks permission for 23 conservatories to be included in some of the larger detached property types. And this will provide a greater choice of housing design for potential buyers. And this, uh, this layout is quite important really because it demonstrates um, the larger plots which are located around here there's some over here, here and some over here that would um, provide for the conservatories. And this, unfortunately, these are where the red crosses are, which relate to the plots that we've just looked at. So I'll go back to the other screen so you can see them in more detail. So we've got them over here. This part of the site here located down here, around here. This area down here is Leyland Lane and these are the existing properties um, that have been there previously. One of the concerns has been related um, in terms of an objection to this application and that's based on the impact of the actual construction of the development and how that's occurred, drainage and also um, that the conservatories would impact on the <laughs> existing privacy of these properties on Leyland Lane. There are no conservatives proposed to the rear of the existing properties on Leyland Lane. The development uh, in terms of drainage, there has been an issue on Leyland Lane at this point before the development began. Uh, on Monday, officers from Lanx County Council flooding team have been on site and met with the applicant who uh, have met with the resident who was concerned. And again, officers have met with the applicant to separately discuss this issue and the resident is aware that further works are required as part of the Red Row site and that will be overseen by Lanks County Flooding Authority. The developer has also agreed to undertake a survey to ensure that the plots are being constructed in accordance with the approved plans. And then this slide just demonstrates what the conservatories would look like. 
Um, they've got a height of 2.4 metres to the eaves and 3.4 metres in total. They're constructed with a brick base to the bottom um, and then they just kind of on these larger type properties just to provide that greater choice. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. OK, uh, thanks for that, Catherine. Um, we don't have any registered speakers on this. We don't have any members not on committee wishing to speak and the applicant stroke agent isn't they're not speaking either. So I'll just open it directly up to committee. Do we have anybody wishing to speak? Councillor Smith. Yeah, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I was just looking at the plan there and the um, the, the conservatories, are, are they, are the doors between the conservatory and the rest of the house? And is the, is the liable to be heating in the conservatory? Um, I don't, I don't, a bit of a technical question, perhaps. I don't know whether you have that information. Um, and the other thing, the um, conservatories have all got glass roofs. Um, you know, the, the sort of, mod, I would say the modern way of doing things nowadays with conservatories that they don't have glass roofs because of the insulation uh, problems that go along with it. Um, so, apart from that, I think it's uh, quite a sensible way forward and I think uh, it'd be useful to see one or two more of these coming forward, to be quite honest, providing they uh, comply with the regulations with regard to uh, the heating and uh, the, the various other um, planning rules that need to be uh, applied to them. Okay, thanks Councillor Smith. Uh, Catherine, are you an expert on double glazing and conservatories? Thank you, Chair. If I could reassure Councillor Smith, um, the conservatories will be built to building control standard, which would assess the impact in terms of those thermal uh, dynamics associated with energy efficiency. Um, and I hope that answers the query. Thank you. Thermal, Smith. thermal dynamics, that's the word I was looking for, Chair. Uh, can, I'll just uh, move approval if I can. Thank you. Certainly. Thanks for that, Councillor Smith. Councillor Hesketh. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think we should allow a variation of this type. It, uh, it, it, it actually makes a little bit more interest on sites and so forth. They're not quite as, uh, as conformity. And uh, I will go along with approval, Mr Chairman. I think it will uh, make the site more interesting. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Hesketh. Councillor Flannery. Just a quick one. I was going to second approval too, but Catherine, that's the best answer I've heard at committee in a long time. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, thanks for that, Councillor Flannery. Um, any other members on committee wishing to speak on this one? Any other proposals? Okay, so Councillor Smith has proposed approval, seconded by John Hesketh, sorry, Councillor John Hesketh, thirdly by Councillor James Flannery. So we shall go to the vote. Councillor Adams? For. Councillor James Flannery? For. Councillor Mary Green? For approval. Councillor Harry Hancock. Approval. Councillor John Hesketh. <laughs> For approval, Mr Chairman. Councillor Amelia. For. Councillor Phil Smith. For approval. Councillor Gareth Watson. For approval. Councillor Barry Yates. For approval, Chair. I'm also for approval. Um, Taz will now give us the scores on the doors. So the recommendation for the variation of condition two to allow uh, 23 uh, conservatories on site is um, approved. Thanks very much for that, Taz. Um, uh, I, agenda item number 12, test track Aston Way Moss Side Industrial Estate at Leyland. Um, Catherine, if, if you can do your representation, please. Thank you, Chair. The application boundary is a small sliver of land to the north of the site identified by the red edge that you can see here on this plan. As a developer is due to start construction shortly on the test track development, they've realised that they need this piece of land to remove the existing infrastructure on the test track site. The extract from the local plan shows this small area, which is located here, 
as falling within the definition of policy C2 for the rede redevelopment of the test track. And as you can see from this area here, this is industry clusters E2 within the local plan. The next slide provides an overview of the test track that's taken from Long Mena Gate near to Midhall Methodist Church, which is located here, looking in an easterly direction. So what we've got is the overview of the test track. And here we have the bridge, which was a viewing platform in order to watch what was happening when they used the site. And the application site relates to this small sliver just allocated there. Again, this is another view. This is taken from the industrial unit that exists. And then we've got the application site here. So it really is just a small sliver of area. And you can see the bridge that's that, that is existing within the test track. And then we've got a more detailed area. So in order to take the infrastructure associated with the test track down, this embankment here is required, hence the application. Just go back. The plans provide for the ground levels to tie in with the existing if planning permission is granted. And we would normally expect that the loss of the trees should be replaced. But the land in, is not in control of the applicant. The owner of the land itself, which relates to MI vehicle testing, is um, keen to explore further car parking and storage on this area at a future date. So as detailed in the report at paragraph 5.1, the landowner has unta undertaken considerable efforts in terms of £200,000 to address climate change through the solar panels etc that they've put on the building and the loss of the trees is an is unavoidable to ensure the safe demolition of the structures so on balance given the location of the land the small group of low value trees it is acceptable for this application to go forward and is recommended for approval as per the report thank you chair okay thanks for that catherine um we don't have any registered speakers on this application do I have any members not on committee? Uh, do we have the applicant or his agent, Simon Artis? Yes, hello, can you uh, hear me? We can all hear you, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair and members. Um, hope everyone's well. Um, I'm Simon Artis, Planning Manager for Barrett Homes. Um, this application is uh, a bit of an anomaly in truth. Uh, as Catherine uh, explained, the planning permission to redevelop the test track site included the removal of the viewing bridge, but the red edge excluded the embankment, uh, which is owned by MIPD Limited. Uh, their views are set out in paragraphs 5.2 and 5.3 of the committee report. Just to confirm uh, to committee that Barrett Holmes wants to start work on the test track site as soon as possible this year, um, <clears throat> and removing the bridge necessitates removal also of this small embankment area. Um, we want to build in the order of 300 new homes, including affordable homes, in the next five years. But we do need permission tonight to tie in this embankment work with what's um, already approved. So I'm happy to take um, any questions that members might have. Okay, uh, thanks for that, Mr. Artis. Um, do we have? I'll open it up to committee then. Um, Councillor John Hesketh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I don't see any reason uh, for not, you know, we can re remove that. Uh, mound and so forth and i'm sure that it will help with the development of the site at a later date thank you mr chairman uh, i'll go along with it okay thanks councillor hesketh uh councillor mary green please thank you chair yeah if this enables mi vehicle technologies to expand or to assist the establishment at a future date I'm all for it. This this is a, a good industry that's there now, giving employment to people, and it's it's a government building, it's government works, and I think we should encourage it. So if by removing this helps it, 
then I'm all for it. Thank you. Councillor Phil Smith. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, I've actually visited these premises some years ago, um, to be quite honest, and they're involved in a lot of real, lot of uh, technical detail on vehicles and type approval and stuff like that. It is a national company. Uh, they do really, really well. Um, with regard to sort of removing these trees or bushes, most of them are self-seeded on that site anyway, and a lot of them are being removed. Uh, but with regard to the... Um, the green infrastructure on the test track site uh, is substantial and I think that sort of um, plus what the, the company are looking to do with regard to these uh, solar panels and solar energy um, I think it's a good good application and uh, if John Hesketh has, has proposed it I would second it. Thank you. Okay uh, do we have any other proposals or anybody else wishing to speak on this application? We have had a proposal Councillor Hesketh and the secondary councillor Phil Smith for approval. I will now go to the vote. Councillor Will Adams. For. Councillor James Flannery. For. Councillor Mary Green. For approval. Councillor Harry Hancock. Approval. Councillor John Hesketh. For approval. Councillor Amelia. For. Councillor Phil Smith. For approval. Councillor Gareth Watson. For approval. Councillor Barry Yates. For approval, Chair. I am also for approval. Taz, will you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? Yes. So the removal of obs the obsolete bridge on test track redevelopment um, is carried and uh, permission is granted in respect to that. Okay, thanks for that, Taz. Okay, agenda item number 13. Is being presented by Chris Sowerby, who informs me that he's got the twilight shift. <laughs> okay, Chris, this is the land rear of Lancaster House on Chancerium Way in Leyland. If you can make your presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. I, I prefer twilight to graveyard shift anyway. Um, the application relates to an extensive area of hard standing within the Lancashire Business Park that's currently used for the parking of vehicles associated with the nearby Amazon Distribution Centre. The business includes a warehouse and commercial units in a variety of sizes and of varying heights. This is the application site here. To the south of the site is an electrical substation associated um, with the housing development beyond and an area of public open space. This is the layout of the uh, development that was approved and is currently being constructed to the south as the application site is up above beyond here. This is a view across the public open space uh, to the application site. The existing boundary landscaping is to be retained and enhanced. The existing access onto Centurion Way but it would be used to access the development. You can see all the parking of the vehicles at the moment. Currently, Amazon deliver, uh, delivery drivers either store their vehicles on the site, um, on local roads or at their homes before travelling to, to the nearby distribution centre. The proposed four level 552 bay parking facility would therefore not increase traffic to the business park and would remove existing on street parking. All of the parking bays would, uh, would be provided with electrical vehicle charging points with the aim of the company to transfer the entire fleet to electric vehicles by 2030. The structure would be up to a height of 15.75 metres, which is no higher than the associated warehouse units within the business park. This is an artist's impression. Um, a distance of 80 metres would be present from the facility across the public open space to the houses um, beyond that have just been constructed. The southern elevation of the facility will be finished in acoustic cladding, which exceeds the required acoustic performance sought by environmental health. A similar colour scheme for the cladding is also present on the associated warehouse building within the business park. County Highways have raised no objection to the proposal and seek a payment towards the implementation and monitoring of a travel plan. 
Whilst the proposal will alter the outlook for some residents, the benefits that the development would bring are considered to be significant. The proposal accords with the relevant policies in the local plan and is therefore recommended for approval subject to the imposition of conditions and following the securing of monies towards the travel plan. That's all. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, um, Chris. Right, I do have a registered councillor not on committee wishing to speak this evening. Good evening, Councillor Alty. Good evening, Chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I wish I had more time, but I understand we're limited. Uh, listening to tonight's conversations, I've come to realise that the devil really is in the detail or the lack of. So I'm representing Mr McGrath, who lives on Kentmere Avenue. Um, I will add my comments as a ward councillor for Farrington East towards the end of this document that I'm reading. While Mr McGrath's views are noted in the broadest sense within the section five of the planning report, I believe that the response to his and other resident concerns could have been more fully explored and mitigating impact features included. The visual impact alone of this four storey parking facility is that of a three sided brutalist con construct with a cladded aspect to just one side. While the proposed facility claims to address the parking issues on Centurion Way, many vehicles have been observed sitting for days, some rentals from hire companies and therefore potentially achieving minimal impact. Tonight I'm requesting that a decision on this planning application be deferred until specific issues presented in question form to follow can be addressed. Please bear with me. Um, can site operating hours be specified to include, for example, a five day week between the hours of 7.30 and 5.30 to enable nearby residents reasonable accommodation in reducing light, noise and dust pollution? A delivery schedules to the construction site can be fixed. Can regular dust damping be guaranteed on site, for example? This is a residential area quite nearby, a very small one that has suffered recent expansion through other developments. Can delivery vehicles using the motorway networks be directed to arrive and leave the site using the road through Lancashire Business Park rather than via Centurion Way, which feeds into peak time traffic? Can directed downlighting be employed within and outside the facility to reduce impact upon residents and local wildlife, nocturnal and daytime, so that can lighting at the top stories be motion triggered and not lit continuously through the night? With it being Amazon, we don't know what hours it's going to be open. Can time restrictions be placed on the movement of vehicles within the facility? For example, not before 6 a.m. and not after 7 p.m. Can guarantee targets for those electric vehicles be included within the planning application? For example, a minimum of 50% at five years and 100% at eight years. As we know, an aim is not a guarantee, it's merely an aspiration. Can conditions for continued operational use include spot checks on noise levels within the first two years to ensure that the acoustic cladding is effective? Can air quality monitoring be undertaken at regular intervals in the first five years of operational use, allowing for rapid detection of emerging and potentially harmful emission levels? Can we direct these delivery vehicles leaving Lancashire Business Park distribution warehouse, which is 300 metres into the business park, to avoid Centurion Way, unless alternative road closures dictate? Can any necessary on-site calming measures be silent? For example, the use of chicanes rather than speed bumps. I ask the committee to defer the decision tonight to allow further exploration of these issues. And I recognise that this facility could be a useful addition to South Ribble and a potential increase in future employment for residents. It's reassuring to note that a planned retention of trees and increase in shrubbery, particularly along the perimeter of the site, is ongoing. And I recognise that it's a fine balance between residential and business needs that need to be found. And I'm hopeful that if these conditions were applied, some of the concerns could be reconciled. It seems to me tonight that with each development being considered, we, um, we only look at it in, as a specific development project and we fail to look at the accumulative effect of traffic. Um, the, the claim that it will not increase traffic into that area is, is actually a bit of a mis misnomer for me. Um, because drivers will have to arrive in vehicles or by public transport, but either way, some will, will arrive in vehicles. Councillor Rolfe, so you've had up 
four and a half minutes. You need to start tying oh. up, please. Well, thank you very much for listening to me. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. Uh, you are the ward councillor and I applaud your passion. Thank you. OK, do we have the applicant or the agent, Hannah Thomas Davis, with us? Hello, Chairman. It's um, actually Serena Page from DWD speaking. Um, I trust that's OK. Are you the agent? Uh, yes, DWD is the agent. OK, I'm if you'd like to make your presentation, we've got four minutes, OK? Super, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, as I've just said, I'm Serena Page. I'm a partner at DWD. Um, and in the event that you've got any questions about the application, we've also got Hannah Thomas Davies on hand, um, James Bancroft from Vectos, who's a transport consultant, and Luke Smith from WSP, who is the acoustic consultant on the um, on the project. Um, we've been working closely with your planning officers um, to produce the application. Um, which will enable the um, the facility to serve the existing warehouse on Red Rose Drive to transition to 100% electric delivery vehicles, which is in line with the operator's ambition and also in line with the council's own ambition to become carbon neutral by 2030. Um, we commend your officer's report recommending the approval of the application and the report is very thorough. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to briefly summarise some of the key planning benefits of the proposed development and how the design has evolved to take into account the site constraints. Um, so in designing the proposed van storage deck, the existing mature landscaping around the northern, western and southern boundaries of the site um, has been retained and new planting will be provided around the site, including native and ornamental tree planting. The height of the proposed structure has been designed to be in keeping with Lancashire Business Park and the southern elevation of the deck is proposed to be clad in shades of grey and blue cladding. The colours will be broken up across the facade to create a more interesting elevation from the south where it will be visible to residents. The proposed cladding will also serve to mitigate noise. The facility will allow for freight consolidation rather than intensification of an existing operation. Under the current operation, the drivers provide their own vans or they're provided by agencies which drive to the warehouse to pick up deliveries before setting out on their assigned delivery route. The provision of the van storage facility will accommodate the warehouse's fleet of vans which drivers will collect before driving to the warehouse at their allocated time to pick up deliveries and commence their route. This allows the van drivers the ability to travel to the site by modes other than private vehicle. It also means that they don't need to store the vans around their homes overnight. The provision of a dedicated van storage site can enable the business to make the delivery routes more efficient by enhancing the route that drivers take from a single starting point and allowing more parcels to be delivered per launch of a vehicle. It's important to note that the drivers don't come and go from the site throughout the day, but instead return to the site once they've completed their route. We note that your highways authority accept the transport statement submitted in support of the application and we've agreed to the condition of a travel plan which seeks to encourage drivers to travel to the site by sustainable means. The application presented to you this evening will provide a new deck van storage facility to support an existing employer in Leyland and facilitate the transition to a zero carbon vehicle delivery fleet. It simply won't be possible to require drivers to charge vehicles overnight at their homes and so the transition to an electric van fleet relies on storage facilities of this nature. We therefore hope that you'll vote to approve your officer's recommendation and support the sustainable development proposed. But if you do have any specific questions, as I say, the, um, the applicant team is on hand um, should you wish to fill them to us. Many thanks. OK, thanks for your presentation. Um, just before I do open it up to committee, uh, the agents, noise and transport consultants are also on this team's meeting. And if you have any questions for them, uh, I will allow it. OK, Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. <laughs> um, well, I would just like to make a comment, really, just a general one. It, it's a good report and it's a good application. But in the spirit of partnership, um, the, the ward councillor, Councillor Alty, has made some reasonable suggestions. I'm just 
could I just make a suggestion that um, you work with the ward councillor to try and address some of the issues which he's raised in the spirit of <clears throat> the application, um, but the rest of it seems really appropriate. So thank you. Cheers. Councillor Smith, were you wanting to speak? Not at this stage, but I would like to see the photographs of the um, the building itself and the, the, okay, the cladding Chris, and things like that. Okay, show us the artist's representation? Yeah, I Well, um, yeah, the, del the delay is that um, Chris is handing out a technical spec, shall we say, from an architect, is that right? What, in opening it? Sure. Yes. When you say handing out, how how does that work for people not in the civic? It obviously doesn't. <laughs> They're just like attracts drawings that Councillor Smith wants to look at. Okay. Ah, Wi-Fi is down, Councillor Adams. That's why you can't see them. Right, okay. Mind, you, mind your head on that wall. <laughs> this is what's known as the technology failing us. <laughs> Councillor Smith? Well, yeah, while we're, while we're trying to get reconnected. And it looks as though majority of the, if not all of the southern elevation, um, which will face any housing across the the open land there, uh, will be cladded with that. Is that is that correct? Yes, that, that's correct, Councillor. The southern elevation is cladded in acoustic cladding at full height. So in terms of any potential loss of privacy um, to the residential properties uh, 80 metres to the south, there is no possibility of loss of privacy. Thank you. Do we have any other members on committee got anything? Have I not? Say? Is my hand not showing, Mr Chairman? It isn't Councillor Hesketh because the Wi-Fi is down, but I can hear you. So right. I will well, I, I will bring you then. in now, Councillor Hesketh. Uh, this is adjacent to uh, an industrial estate, uh, but uh, it will centralise and ease the parking in that area if this is erected. And uh, as I see it and as I read it, it would appear that it is more than the recommended distance from local houses and so forth. So I would go along with it, Mr. Chairman. I think it would be very useful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Hesketh. So you proposed approval? Approval, yes. Thanks, Councillor Hesketh. Hi, Councillor Green. Thank you, Chair. Right, just a couple of points. Um, for clarification, that green open public space or park, you know, green wedge, whatever you want to call it, in front of the new houses leading up to a row of trees 
and then the car park is at the back of those trees, I presume, or, or will be. The existing car park is there. Um, are those trees being kept there? Only for the fact that um, even though it, the wall facing the houses is quite a distance away and shouldn't impact on those residents at all, because it's quite a distance away, even so, the trees would soften it a little bit if they were able to be left there. Um, I'm very keen that the company, Amazon, is very attentive to detail. They're putting all electric vans in, which I think is good for atmosphere. Although, as they have rightly said, if they don't get this facility for charging, they're going to be absolutely snookered. They're not going to be able to charge their electric vehicles. So, in a way, it's imperative that this goes through for them. Otherwise, they're not going to be operative. Um, we're not sitting on this area, although you want it as nice as possible for the residents, it is a combined residential and industrial site. There's a lot of industrial uh, units around, around and about. So I think, though, that Amazon has tried to address these points as much as possible for the residents, and I'm quite in impressed on that. Um, I think we should be happy to have this facility. I know Amazon is very, very popular. Um, I myself have used it quite a bit during the lockdown and found it very useful. May I comment, though, that I challenge it that the hours finish at seven o'clock. I've had deliveries much later than seven o'clock from Amazon. Um, but we should be happy because of the number of, of employment places there'll be, administrative, manual drivers, et cetera, et cetera, which will bring a lot of work into the area. And I think if, if Amazon can work with local councillors and county councillors, uh, to make it as pleasant as possible for the residents. I think uh, we're very fortunate to have this facility in our borough and I'd like to second this application. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that, Councillor Green. Uh, Chris, would you like to come in on the questions you were asked there? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I can confirm that um, the trees that were shown along the boundary are to be retained. There's also to be um, enhancement planting along that boundary and um, also um, the elevation of the building which I showed, which I now can no longer show, um, it isn't hard up against that boundary, it's another 10 metres beyond the boundary because you've got uh, an access road between that as well, so it, it's not the building's going to be on that boundary, it's another 10 metres um, set into the site. So thank you Chair. Yeah, thanks for that uh, Chris. Um, would the agent confirm to me that she is willing to follow uh, Councillor Flannery's um, recommendation that she works closely with the ward councillor? Sorry, I was struggling to find the uh, the mute button then. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, we welcome the opportunity. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see what, how that would be framed in terms of the decision notice. Um, presumably that would be an informative, would it? It certainly would. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, we'd, we'd welcome it. Would you like me to give you her email address now? Um, yeah. Bear with me one second. I think actually, Chair, there's, I don't know if the lady from Amazon's aware of it, but Paul Wharton Hardman is also, I think, the co-counsellor, so perhaps if his email address could be sent to her as well for him to keep um, some rapport with, with all the councillors. Thank you. Well, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we're, we're crossing each other. Her email address is jalty123 at aol.com. Yep, thank you, Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, that's her personal email address. Her email address is on the Council's website, okay. Use that, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank, thank, thanks for your time. 
Okay, so I've had a proposer for approval. I've had a seconder for approval, Councillor Mrs Green. Councillor Smith, did you want to come in? Yeah, so only quickly. I mean, I, I you know, like the application, I have to say. I think it's innovative. Um, I think it's the way that um, a lot of these uh, delivery companies, and there's more and more of them around, you see them all over the place now, and I think uh, I think this is the way to go. It alleviates lots of problems, and maybe it does cause one or two problems for residents, which, um, which is sad, uh, but um, it is an industrial site. Um, and I think Amazon will work along with the resident and, and do the best for them within the boundaries that, that, that they have, to be quite honest. So I, I will be voting for it, Chair. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, Councillor Smith. Chair. Councillor Adams. Sorry, I did raise my hand, Chair, but I'm, I'm away. You probably can't see it. So, uh, yeah, just um, thank you to Councillor Alty and to uh, Serena um, regarding. Um, working together on this, I think it's important. I think it's a it's a it's a good application with lots of good ideas. Uh, and if we can further have further dialogue between the applicant uh, and the local councillor, uh, that would be beneficial for the residents, which I think is a is a win win. And I would support uh, the approval on those okay. conditions. Okay, thanks, Councillor Adams. Do we have any other members on committee wishing to speak? No, okay, so we'll go to the vote. The vote is for approval. Councillor Will Adams? Four. Councillor James Flannery? Four. Councillor Mary Green? For approval. Councillor Harry Hancock? Four. Councillor John Hesketh? For approval. Ooh, I've lost that. Councillor. Councillor Christine Melia. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. For approval. Councillor Gareth Watson. For approval. Councillor Barry Yates. For approval, Chair. I am also for approval. Uh, Taz, how's that gone? That's a unanimous uh, for approval of so the actual. So that has been approved unanimously. And that concludes this evening's committee. Uh, thank you all for your attendance. If Council Evans would like to wake up. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much, everyone. See you at the next um, next committee.